This episode will cover practical aspects of the NMR magnet shimming. You are watching the Notre Dame NMR Operation and Concept Series. I am Evgeny Kavrigin and I will walk you through the shimming workflow the way we do it at Notre Dame. The shim system uses a deuterium signal to decide on shim values best for the inserted sample. Therefore, we must have at least 10% of deuterated solvent in any NMR tube. Before we can shim, the sample must be locked, which means that the lock system is activated. If you forgot to lock, the shim system will complain and remind you to lock. A rule of thumb, if your locking fails, you cannot proceed to shimming until you rectify the problem. I just mentioned that the shimming algorithm needs a locked deuterium signal to adjust shims for a sharp line shape. However, you may recall from previous episodes that the lock system itself expects a relatively sharp deuterium peak, which means that the shims should already be quite good. Does it look like a problem of a chicken and an egg? Yes, it does, because it is. In fact, when the magnet is installed and energized, you cannot lock or automatically shim immediately. Instead, the magnet engineer spends multiple hours shimming manually, just observing a shape of a deuterium or proton peak and adjusting the shim currents. This gets us an approximation of a standard shim set, which helps the lock system find the deuterium resonance. Once the spectrometer is initially locked, the automatic shimming algorithm will work and help us achieve sharp peak shapes suitable for NMR experiments. Once the magnet is shimmed, the shim values stay until next shimming. Therefore, you always inherit a shim set from a previous user. However, if their sample was very different than yours, their shim values may have been good for them, but may be very unsuitable for your tube. If a shim set doesn't match your tube, the lock signal will be broad or distorted, and the lock system may fail. Therefore, to ensure that the lock system always works for you, you must always load a standard shim set after you inserted your sample. In essence, loading a standard shim set erases the memory of a previous sample from the magnet and returns the instrument to its original clean state. Here are simple steps to prepare your spectrometer for successful shimming. After you inserted your sample, first you must tune the probe, at least the proton channel. I told you that the shimming system will typically use deuterium, but it will also need a proton in proton-rich solvents. Second, you load the standard shim set to reset the shims to their original state. Finally, you lock the spectrometer on your solvent. If you have successfully locked, your sample is good to go to shimming. However, if your locking failed, stop. You cannot shim until you rectify the problem. First, eject your sample and see if the tube has enough solution. Your sample should be 40 mm or longer. And your tube should be properly set in a spinner with a depth gauge. Second, verify that your bottle of the NMR solvent contains deuterated solvent indeed, not its protonated variety. Finally, verify that you supplied the lock system with the correct solvent name. Utilize lock command to open the solvent table and make an accurate selection. Still cannot lock? Test the spectrometer locking system. Insert the standard sample of CDCL3, load standard shims, and try to lock. If the standard locks successfully, your sample has a problem. Watch next episodes for common problems due to samples and tubes. If the CDCL3 standard does not lock, 
spectrometer has a problem. Inform NMR stuff. Let's go through a practical shimming workflow. After you inserted your sample and tuned the probe, we need to load a standard shim set. In the Acquire tab, click arrow down next to shim and then click Read shim values. The name of the standard shim set may be different on different spectrometers. For our probes on 400 and 500, it is always BBF4 latest. On a cryoprobe, it is cryoprobe CPTCI. Select the shim set name and click read. You may also enter RSH BBF4 latest on the command line instead. Now it is time to lock. If the lock window is not shown, I will close it for demonstration. Double click the lock window icon in the status bar on the bottom. To begin, I click lock button and select my solvent. My tube is filled with deuterochloroform. Click OK and the NMR instrument started a locking procedure. A command line equivalent of these actions is lock CDCL3. Pay attention to the signal-to-noise ratio in the lock, relationship of the lock height to its noise amount. The ratio here is OK, but on a low side. If you see more noise and your lock traces show up closer to the bottom, your lock signal is poor. Your instrument may still succeed in locking, but it will be harder to shim. Once locking is done, you should see a message lock and done in the status bar. Before we begin shimming, we turn on sample rotation. Our shimming procedure will be what is called one-dimensional, and it requires spinning during shimming for best results. Click Acquire, spin arrow down, turn sample rotation on. Alternatively, you can type arrow on on a command line. Rotation stabilized, we can proceed. Now click Shim Arrow Down. Additional Top Shim options. Select Open Top Shim Graphical User Interface. This is equivalent to entering Top Shim GUI on a command line. This interface helps us monitor shimming progress. The only item you need to set here is the field Optimize 4 that should show the nucleus you plan to observe. I will observe Proton. Therefore, I am changing it to Proton. Click Start and switch to Report tab. The TopShim algorithm outputs several pieces of information as it starts, which you can mostly ignore. The nucleus to optimize for is shown here. What is important to note is the Results section. The value of initial B0 standard deviation indicates how strong the initial variation of the magnetic field is along the length of your sample. Several hertz is normal for a new sample inserted into the magnet where a standard shim set was loaded. This is a predictor of how quick your shimming may be. If you see tens of hertz, you may expect shimming to work for a while and likely you will have to shim more times. If you see hundreds of hertz, the magnetic field is really off. In any case, you let TopShim continue and see if it is able to correct the initial deviation to a better value. As shimming algorithm converges to the best set of shim values, you will see final B0 standard deviation value. You need anything below 1 Hz, the smaller the better. Sometimes, with some samples, we cannot get better than several Hz. In this case, you would shim second time. Once the algorithm completes, it outputs the final confirmation messages. The numbers that TopShim outputs here are not related directly to the resolution. These are internal parameters by which TopShim decides success. Quality of shimming must always be checked directly by acquiring a proton spectrum. 
First, all peaks must be symmetric. Bad shimming leads to identical distortion pattern in all lines. Often, a residual peak of a protonated solvent in the deuterated solvent provides a good signal to assess resolution. If your solvent has a splitting pattern, this is the best benchmark, because you can see directly how deeply multiplet components are resolved. Poor shimming means broader lines, less resolution. It doesn't need to be residual solvent. Any strong peak of your compound with J-coupling may serve this purpose. If you only have singlets, I would measure the line width at the half height of the peak and record this number in my notebook. The full width at half height of this peak becomes my internal measure of how well my spectrometer was shimmed before I started a particular NMR experiment. In summary, to shim the sample, we tune the probe and load a standard shim set, lock on our solvent, start sample rotation, launch top spin GUI, verify the nucleus to optimize for, start shimming by clicking start and watching the report tab. If the final B0 standard deviation is greater than 1 Hz, we should repeat shimming. Final value less than 1 Hz means that top shim found optimal shims. You should record a Proton 1D to assess real spectral resolution. This is discussed in next episodes.